Hello travelers, welcome back to my channel. Today is all about forageables in Palea. There are a lot of rumors going around in the game about how a forageable works, when it spawns, when it despawns, and where their locations are. So I want to address those rumors with actual science. Myself and a couple members of my community spent hours upon hours finding forageables right when they spawned in using dowsing rods, watching them, and calculating when they despawn, how they spawn in, and basically every little thing we could up to date. The one forageable that will not be addressed in this video is flow trees. Flow trees are a completely separate entity, so while they do apply to foraging skill level, I will not be talking about those in this video. The first thing we noticed, and by far the most important, is that every gatherable forageable in the game, this ranges from coral to heart drop lilies, will despawn at a rate dependent on its rarity. The game has common items, uncommon, rare, and epic. When we started our research into forageables, specifically the gatherable items, we started with the rarest, which included the epic items like heart drop lilies and dari cloves because those are the ones that people care most about when it comes to when are they going to despawn, when picked versus not picked, when do they respawn into the world. I'll address the first thing. No gatherable has a set spawn time. One of the biggest rumors is that the servers reset at midnight in game or 6 a.m. in game, 6 p.m. in game. None of that is accurate. I spent hours upon hours in the same server, standing in different locations, for continuous amounts of time, watching things spawn and despawn. And before I go any further, I want to put in a disclaimer. The game is in beta. This is my own science. I did no data mining. It was completely by gameplay alone. So everything I'm telling you is based off of my own findings, though I'm fairly certain they're as accurate as possible because of the amount of time I spent doing this. So no, a Dari Clove and a Heart Drop Lily or any of the other forageables are not set to a specific time in day for when they spawn. Something we did notice is that after about three and a half hours of playing in the same server, we had all found three Heart Drop Lilies and three Dari Cloves, which is about one epic spawn per hour, but they don't spawn in exactly at the hour. There is the possibility that a heart drop lily is tied to briar daisies and the dari clove is tied to sweet leaves and morel mushrooms. So dependent on which one of those is being actively picked up affects the spawn rate of the other forageable. But that science is almost impossible to do. I would need the entire server to not pick up any forageable except for briar daisies to see if a heart drop lily spawned in and vice versa, only pick up sweet leaves and morel mushrooms to see if a dari clove spawns in. Maybe one day I'll do that science and try to fill a whole server of people that I know. But as of right now, it's just simply best that you pick up as many forageables as you can as you're wandering around Bahari Bay for a better chance to find epic spawns. Ironically enough, I said I wasn't going to mention flow trees, but it's similar to flow trees. You have to cut down a tree for a flow tree to have the opportunity to spawn in. And dari cloves, heart drop lilies, anything on the grass is exactly the same way. The forageable I will mention that's a little bit different is the heat root. Because the heat root grows on the sides of cliffs, I'm not 100% sure if it's affected by the amount of other forageables that are being picked up but they do seem to spawn more frequently in an active server. So I have to assume that they are also on a sort of RNG timer based on how many forageables are being interacted with at any given time. Similarly, the bright shrooms and dragon's beard peat seem to be on the same sort of timer. Items that are not necessarily on the grass seem to be more frequently spawned in in a server that's more active, which makes a lot of sense. So if you're here for how to spawn in forageables that are rare rather than knowing when they're going to despawn, the best takeaway for this video is don't just expect things to appear. The server has to be active and items have to be being picked up and removed so the game can spawn in new ones. 
In both the category of a forageable being spawned in or when it despawns is the question of does a forageable despawn after a certain amount of time if not interacted with by a player? And as far as I can tell, the answer is no. Once a forageable item spawns into the world, it will stay active in the world until interacted with. Now, I can't spend forever in the game and I can't sit for hours on end just staring at something, waiting for it to go away, but I kind of did it anyway. I managed to sit and stare at an item for a total of two hours and it did not go away. It was never interacted with by a player because I watched it spawn in and I sat there staring at it. Now, does this mean that the item still might despawn after five to six hours? Sure, but I don't think anybody's spending that amount of time in a server. So if you are really concerned about how long an item takes to despawn once in the world, and you're going to be spending more than two or three hours in the game, and you haven't found that item, then that's some science you're going to have to do on your own, friend. Now, the game is obviously going to spawn in more commons and uncommons than it is epics and rares. That's a given. But at least this way, we know for certain when an item is going to despawn after you pick it. Here's the list of when a gatherable foraging item will despawn after the first time it is picked. Common and uncommon gatherable forageables will despawn 11 in-game minutes after picked the first time, which means it's 22 IRL seconds. Common and uncommon items include Mountain Morel, Shell, Sundrop Lily, Unopened Oyster, Briar Daisy, Coral, Crystal Lake Lotus, Emerald Carpet Moss, Spice Sprouts, Sweet Leaf, and Wild Garlic. Rare items including the Bright Shroom, Dragon Speared Peat, and Heat Root all despawn after being picked for the first time in 48 in-game minutes, which is 96 IRL seconds. Epic gatherables include the Dari Clove and the Heart Drop Lily. It also includes the green pearl, but because the pearls come from an oyster, those don't get included in this. Dari cloves and heart drop lilies will despawn two in-game hours after being picked for the first time, which is four minutes in the real world. Because of this, I've actually started picking them when I find them, then calling them out and flaring them because I can't guarantee that someone hasn't picked it before I found it. Which leads me into the next rumor. A lot of people say that once a forageable has been picked up, the sound it makes will disappear. This is not entirely true. The sound of a forageable will only stop being played if you are in the vicinity of the forageable when it's picked. If you're at a distance from it, and you run up to it after it's been picked, the sound will still be playing. We're not sure if this is a glitch because of the game being in beta, or if this is an accessibility feature, so that you know the item by auditory sounds is near you, but the game is assuming because you were near it when it was picked, you can see it. That doesn't really make sense to me, so I have to assume it's not meant to keep making noise, but I can't be certain. All I know for sure is that even if you can hear the sound, it doesn't mean it hasn't been picked. So don't risk losing a rare forageable. Pick the item, then call it out, let the server know you've picked it, and put a flare on it. I know the etiquette is generally to call out a forageable and wait for everyone to come, then pick it together. But because we can't guarantee that it wasn't already picked, unless of course you saw it spawn in, I don't want people missing out on the opportunity to get these rare items. Especially now that we have flare arrows, that helps so much. Now, one of the rumors that is true is that epic forageables do spawn in specific locations. They don't spawn just anywhere on the map. So I've included a map here of where you can find those spawn based off of what I've discovered. Now, this doesn't mean that's all inclusive. I could be missing some, but this is what I found. So hopefully this makes your ability to find those epic forageables a little bit easier. 
One of the reasons I wanted to include this is that while there are online resources for maps on where forageables spawn, I have yet to find a map that is actually 100% accurate. Most of them are either too old and missing spawn locations, or I think have just guesstimated where things might be. The most accurate map I have found is on a website called palea.th.gl, but it's still not 100% accurate. So while I'll link it down below, I want to remind you to take all of these online resources with a grain of salt. As I do more science on the forageables and other things in the world of Palea, I will of course make videos on them as well. But for now, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments down below. And as always, if you feel so inclined, like the video and subscribe to the channel. But most importantly, have a very magical day.